Ojolari. I can't tell you they didn't look at Ojolari. They did look at Ojolari. But again, I think the asking price for him was way too high for a lot of these teams. I do think that this will be the one and only move. This is what me and you, and I'm not going to... I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Me and you, this is what we wanted a week ago. Go get some depth. Give up a fifth or a sixth round pick. Go get some depth. Go get somebody that can help you. I wasn't looking for them to trade a second, a third, or a fourth round pick. I was looking for them to trade a fifth or a sixth rounder just to get another good athletic body in here that could help. I would have I would have gone as high as the fourth as long as it was somebody you could keep for a couple of years and somebody who had a little bit more of a resume. You know, nothing against Baron Browning's resume. He doesn't have much of one. He had nine and a half sacks combined in 22 and 23. The Foot injury, as I mentioned, zero sacks this year with only a handful of pressures. So he's had a lot of injuries he's been dealing with this year. The reason why I'm playing the Paris Johnson Jr. cuts, they were, as he mentioned, teammates for a year in Ohio State. And so he was asked again the question today, what he thinks Baron Browning brings to the table. Yeah, I um, mean, you know, I haven't gone against him since, you know, I was, you know, 18, 25. You know what I mean? But I thought I was huge, you know what I mean? But at the same time, though, um, you know, again, I think I still got a feel for that whole year during that COVID season. We were together 24-7, the entire team. But, again, as an athlete, um, his ability to bend, his ability just to get off the rock. You know, I've seen his tape. I've, I've seen his tape the past two years. Um, and just, just keep up with the Buckeyes around the league. And he's explosive off the ball, and I think that's why he's able to, to threaten the edge often. So I think he adds that to the locker room. Look, and inevitably, the, the, the Cardinals, you know, they have to walk a very fine line here, okay? Because the future assets are valuable, and they want to be careful about which ones they spend. And committing to a guy beyond this year, they'd want to make sure, like an Aziz Ojolari, I would assume you would trade for him with the hopes that you'd be able to keep him. I don't think Baron Browning has that same kind of burden attached to him. If he works out great, if he doesn't, great. I think right. we should all... Keep our expectations relatively mild on this. He's a body. He's part of the rotation. I don't think anybody expects Byron Browning is going to come in here and light up the league for 10 sacks in the final whatever games for the Arizona Cardinals. He is depth. He is a body. He is part that, that when added to Darius Robinson Jr., hopefully will improve the defense, even though after yesterday it didn't look like they needed any improving at all. <laughs> I don't know if that was if that was them or if that was the Chicago Bears they were playing, but, man, they put on a clinic I mean, as to how to get the quarterback to move his feet and move him off his spot yesterday. Six sacks, tons of pressures. They were all over Caleb Williams yesterday. It, they were. They were. And there's a lot of people questioning why Caleb Williams was in at the end of the game when he kind of got a little banged up. There's, uh, you know, a lot of people are worried. You know, you're seeing firings right now in the NFL, New Orleans, or Raiders. You're seeing some head coaches and assistant coaches get fired. And a lot of people in Chicago are like, why not us? Why, why are we fired off? You know, people like wake it up and like, okay, where's the news? Where is it? I woke up with Eber Flew's fired and he hasn't been fired. So people are losing their minds in Chicago. Yeah, Charles Davis, uh, he was calling the game yesterday. I'm not sure how many more lessons there are for him in this ball game. I want that kid ready to go for next week. I get what they're doing. They're trying to let him play it out, be competitive, learn a few more things. I still know that there's anything left to learn at this stage for this ball game itself. Yeah. All right, so that Gamble's giving you the information about Baron Browning. Um, it doesn't sound like there will be another move. Maybe this leaves you Cardinal fans yeah. disappointed. Maybe this is about what you expected. They did make a move. I'm sure there are some Cardinal fans out there who wanted them to do more, but we do have to understand that, you know, this draft capital is very, very important to Monty Austin for. But if there's one thing we learned about yesterday's Cardinals win, this team was worthy of an upgrade. You know, th th this team is putting themselves in a position to do things that, frankly, not a lot of people expected them to do. That was as thorough and as dominant a 20-point win as you're going to find in this league. In fact, you look at the score, you have a hard time believing it was only a 20-point win over the Chicago Bears. They kicked their but they yesterday. kicked they kicked their ass. They did. And it was probably the best performance we've ever seen out of the Cardinals offensive line in recent memory. That was a d dominant, dominant clinic. performance. Absolute clinic. By the offensive line. If you're sitting there and saying, well, you know, look, you know, we'll, we'll talk about Kyler's game. It was okay. It didn't need to be great. It yeah. didn't need to be great. Ran the ball really well. Offensive line was terrific. Defense had six sacks. Secondary was outstanding. This kicker, I mean, what's not to like about this kicker? How many yards was that field goal? 55. Yet? It could have been good from 68 or Jeez. 69. Yeah. What?
What a find. Mm -hmm. What a find with this guy. Then you make the trade today. Again, I think they're done now. I'm, I'm expecting that they're done after adding Baron Browning, but they got a guy that they really feel can help them on all three downs. They're all alone in first place. This is Jonathan Gannon from the Cardinals Radio Network asking if this was the most complete win of the year. I don't know. I, I you know, I always going to want more, um, but, you know, we, we did what we needed to do all three phases today to win the game, so that's good to see, but we'll be back at it tomorrow, man. But again, they've put themselves in this position, Gambo, at 5-4, and four, more than halfway through the season, all alone in first place in the NFC West, thanks to everything that happened yesterday. There's a lot that can and will happen the rest of the season. You've got one more game against a Jets team that kind of rallied their season a little bit with a win last Thursday night against the Texans, but one more game against a Jets team. If you can win that, you're six and four going into the break. Yeah, and you'll only have one more game in November. That's the Seattle game. I mean, no matter what, you'll be you know you'll be in this thing going into December. You'll be in this thing. You only have two games left in November. I will say that I'm not expecting Jonah Williams or Darius Robinson to be available for the Jets game. Not a surprise. I, I, I would. I'm say, not expecting yeah, I, either one to be available. Just based off of kind of the vibes, I think you were getting last week and knowing that the bye week is coming. I wouldn't say I'm surprised by that, but you know it'd be nice to have those guys back. I would. Imagine imagine after the bye week hopefully they are locked in loaded and ready to go thanks for watching burns and gambo click to see more from the guys and hit the button in the middle to subscribe so you never miss a video from arizona sports